Hey guys and welcome back to another tasty tutorial. Yesterday we are making this little tasty shield right here. I'll show you a couple of tricks for super quickly modeling the shield and stay until the end of the video because there's a special assignment for all of you. In any case, as always, there's going to be a free resource file in the description of this video on my Gumroad that you're more than welcome to download completely free of charge. In any case, let's get into the video. So I'm going to open up Blender 3.1. I'm using a 2.97 shortcut scheme. I'm sorry, I don't have the screencast keys. So whenever there is going to be a very particular shortcut, I will be adding this into the video subtitles. So I'm going to select everything in the scene and delete it. And I'm going to start fresh by going into my front view on my numpad one with the Z and X axes available, no Y, and just shift A, add a plane, then RX 90 degrees. So I'm working with a nice plane. I'm doing this because I'm eliminating one of the axes out of the equation. So I'm super precise whenever I'm doing everything that it's full frontal. Now I'm gonna go into edit mode of my little plane over here. And I'm going to select the bottom two vertices, press GZ, move them up like that. And then press E to extrude down with the Z. So GZ down SX to scale on the X axis and pull it in like that. I'm going to also add another loop cut. So control R and then make it in the middle. And this is going to be basically the two points that will define the bottom of my shield that I can just press GZ and pull down like that. And the top of my shield, which is going to be GZ and I pull it up like that. I'm just going to select these bottom vertices by pressing B and then drag selecting and moving them up a bit because I want to have a nice chunky little shield right here. Now it's time to start with our modifier chain. And this is a chain that I use time and time again. This is the way I do it. You may have seen other people do it completely differently. This is just huge disclaimer. This is how I do it. And I find it super useful because it's non-destructive. So what I'm going to add is three things. A solidify modifier, which is going to give a bit of girth to my object. So we add this girthiness. We add bevel, which is going to add a bit of softness. And I'm just going to adjust the amount. Maybe I'm going to do two segments, so two cuts, and just adjust them to, let's say, 0.075, something like that. That's a, that's a good amount of softness right there. And I'm going to press Control-1 to add add a subdivision modifier just like that. W to shade smooth so I can see a bit better the chunkiness that is happening right here. Maybe I'll increase the levels viewport to two. I can also do it by just pressing control two. And now I'm just gonna fine tune a bit the shield. So you can see that there's these two little spikes down here. I don't really like them. So the more I adjust the angle of my shield, the more these spikes start to disappear. So let's say I'm going to move it to about 40 degrees, something like that. And I have this nicely rounded top and nicely rounded bottom. Maybe I'm just going to go in edit mode and move the bottom upwards a bit more to somewhere around there. Maybe I'm going to move the top a bit upwards. So it's going to be like this nicely defined like triton top. I, I don't know how to call this type of shield. I usually just go on Pinterest and search for references there. Next thing I'm doing, control A, reset the scale and shift control alt C, origin to geometry. This is very important because the origin point is the average distance between all of the vertices in the object and it comes into play for our next step. So the usual way I see people going about it is putting a mirror modifier and then just choosing the vertices on the, the right and then moving them on the Y to bend the object. I, however, prefer to go with the modifier and use a simple deform. And in my case, I'm going to go under bend and I want to bend it on the Z axis. But this now looks more of like, like a police badge rather than a shield. So I'm just going to press Control A and reset the rotation because we rotated the plane initially. So basically that's why this was happening. Now we have this nicely bent shield, just super tasteful bent. It's not interfering with the tastiness of our shield. Maybe I can bring the solidify slightly down so it's not just overbearing. But now I also want to bend the top and the bottom of the shield. So I'm just going to go under 
simple deform shift D to duplicate that modifier and switch the axis to X. Maybe I can lower the angle to about 30 so it's not super, super strong, but this looks kind of okay. Next thing I'm good. <clears throat> Next thing I'm doing is the, it's dividing the rim and the wooden part of the shield. I'm going to go into edit mode and then I'm going to select all of these faces and press I to inset. What I'm doing here, I'm defining what's going to be the center wood portion of the shield and what's going to be the rim. So I want to have a pretty thick rim so i'm just gonna put them there left click to insert that but now i'm not gonna choose anything i'm just gonna go out of edit mode shift d to duplicate the object again and i'm gonna press tab again to go into edit mode in this one i'm gonna delete the faces so i'm just gonna press x delete the faces and this is gonna be my rim and i'm gonna choose the original object go into edit mode press ctrl i to invert the selection which is gonna choose just the edge of my shield and press X, delete the vertices. And I end up with this. So basically now I have a divided rim. You can see that there is these weird artifacts. Usually this is because of the bevel. So what I wanna do in this case is just go under geometry and the mirror outer change it from sharp to either patch or arc, whichever one brings me better results. You can also just decrease or increase the amount of bevels, decrease the segments maybe as well. So you're just trying to find out a way that this is not going to be too much of a final issue. Sometimes the simple deforms can also create these creases, although very rarely. And if your crease just continues to persist, just put a edge loop and just drag it about there. Now I can also put another one right here. So we have a nicely defined edge right there but the left side is now left on its own so how do we solve that we can also do something a bit more asymmetrical but if you want to keep perfect symmetry just choose all of the vertices on your left i chose with the c but you can do b whatever you want press x to delete those vertices so you end up with half a shield like this and under your modifier menu just add a mirror this is going to be added to the end of your loop which looks kind of dope but this is not the point <laughs> we'll move it back to the beginning of our chain press clipping boom and now it's perfectly in line what this allows us to do is basically control the thickness of the rim control the thickness of our wood so basically we have more control over our object and what's happening with our object again i invite you to test different positions of these i invite you to maybe drop down your rim maybe you put another edge loop there and bring that edge loop up or down so you have different options of creating your own shield experiment because that's in the end what's going to bring you some really nice results so in my case here i really like the thickness of the shield i'm just going to bring the thickness of the wooden part a bit more back maybe i'm going to tighten the bevel a bit so i have a bit more sharpness and now to add that extra like woodiness to the whole thing i'm just choosing the center of our shield and i'm going to add a couple of edge loops on both sides maybe a couple in the center a couple in the bottom and then i'm just going to choose some of these vertices and press v to rip basically i'm just displacing these i'm just maybe moving them slightly away from each other or slightly closer to each other depending on how my bevel is working i'm just gonna go around the object super randomly try to try to work out some interesting points where like the shield would get either ripped or chipped or something like that uh, notice if you don't have three neighboring vertices your rip is not gonna succeed now it's time to add some final details in my case uh, this is going to be a buckle on the front and then i'm gonna make a handle on the back shift a mesh and i'm going to add a circle in the bottom left menu i'm going to bring it up and change from 32 to 12 it's always easier to work with a lesser number of vertices rx and 90 to rotate it by 90 degrees on the x axis and i'm gonna scale it down to about there i like the scale of things right there so i think i'm just gonna keep rolling with that go into edit mode press f so i get like a nice face 
and I'm going to extrude outwards ever so slightly, scale it by pressing S shift Y, and then scale it on the X and Z axis like that. Then I'm going to press I to insert it a bit outwards and then move my mouse to bring it back in again. Maybe I'm going to press I again, bring it somewhere there to the center. So I'm trying to define the size of my buckle and I'm just going to press I again and bring it like that. Exit your edit mode, go into object mode, control A, reset the scale. And now while we still have this selected, control B and just bevel it downwards and scroll with your mouse so you add a couple more cuts. W to shade smooth, so we see how it looks like when it's smoothed. And now instead of putting all of the chain again and going through all of that rigmarole, I'm just going to choose my buckler, shift select the rim, control L and copy the modifiers. Now you can see that it's kind of messed up and that's because of a couple of things. The first thing is the mirror. So we need to delete that. And we also need to delete the solidify because we don't really need it. And for the final thing, you can see that it's still not working properly. And it's the same reason as before because of the simple D form. So we need to go control A, reset the rotation. And now it's actually working as it's supposed to. Now for our handle, I'm going to use a very simple trick, which is using a path. I think paths are extremely underrated in Blender. I think you, they should be used a bit more sometimes because it's a super easy way to model things very quickly. So shift A, add a curve path. I'm gonna drag it by pressing G, Y to the back, S, X to scale it on the X, and then reset the scale with control A, apply scale so that we don't have any issues further on. R, Y, 90, so I rotate it by 90 degrees on the Y axis, so it's nice and aligned. And now I still need a bit more thickness. So I'm gonna go under my object data properties, this green little line over here, geometry and the extrude and depth of the bevel are the two things that I'm gonna be playing around with. So I'm gonna extrude this to about Let's say 0 0.195, so it's nice and thick. And the depth, I can do it 0 0.068. So this is basically going to be our handle. Maybe I can bring the extrusion a bit more in. And I can go into the edit mode of the path, and I'm just going to choose the top and bottom vertices. Move them by pressing G, Y, slightly more there. Yes, so that they kind of intermingle with the shield. Or maybe just a bit backwards, sort of like that. I'm going to press S, Z to bring them down like that. And then I'm going to choose the vertices closest to the central one, S, Z, and just make them a bit bigger. I can also choose the ends again and press E to extrude and then move it further so I get this nice C shape that's going to offer the ability to like put a hand through it. So it seems just a bit more organic. I can also just select these vertices and then start pulling them in a bit more, maybe scaling them a bit down, a bit upwards. Maybe I can choose the central point and move it on the Y a bit. So this is completely up to you. Two things I want to do right now, control A to reset the scale and then shift control alt C origin to geometry. And we're doing this again because we're going to be using a very specific way of doing the handle because I want to add leather straps to this. And it's important that all of these steps now are followed because by doing so, you will have a perfectly centered leather strap. Shift S, cursor to selected. This is going to put our cursor to the selected object that has the perfect origin point for it. Shift A, add a curve. And this time I'm going to add a circle. I'm going to scale the circle down to about here. Control A, reset the scale. I'm going to go into edit mode. And in edit mode, I'll choose the right and left vertices and scale them on the Y axis like that. So they are kind of resembling the bevel of our handle. Again, in my object data properties under geometry and bevel, I'm going to extrude this bad boy a bit and increase the depth. So it kind of already looks like a belt strap. Scale it on the X so it's slightly tighter. And I'm going to go under my modifiers tab and add two things. The first one is going to be an array. And an array is kind of self-explanatory, so basically it makes many copies of your object or path. 
and a curve. And this curve is what's going to help us basically follow the object. So if I choose the eyedropper of the curve object and click on my handle, it positioned it perfectly. Now I'm just going to change the factor from x1 to z1, or in our case, minus one, maybe correct it a bit more. So it's minus 0 0.82. Increase the count to, let's say, I don't know, let's say six belt traps and press GZ. And I just scroll to find a good position for our straps. Now you can see a bit of clipping going on, and this is probably because the thickness of the handle is a bit too much. So I go back into my object data properties and just decrease the bevel of my handle. You can see that these are also a bit interjecting. So I'm just going to increase the size a bit so they get like a couple of more ridges right there. GZ again to just fine tune the position of the handle. And essentially that's it for the modeling part. As for texturing, I can just show you super quickly. You can go under Blender Kit, which is a free Blender add-on that actually has models, materials, or all sorts of goodies that some of them are free, most of them are paid. I'm going to go into my viewport shading so I can see what's happening with my little shield right here. And I'm going to go under materials and then search for first iron. Let's search for a iron material. So this iron touched material seems to work pretty well. Now I want to copy this material to the buckle and to the handle. And you can do that by using a super nifty add-on. You need to go under edit preferences and under your preferences, you need to find the add-on and under your add-ons search for material utilities and check that because that is going to give you the ability to use these shortcuts. So shift Q, for example, in my case, it's an extremely useful shortcut because I can just choose the curve. I can choose the buckle and then I can choose my final piece of the shield. Shift Q, copy materials to select it and it copied all of the materials immediately. Now, final thing, let's search for some wood. So I'm just going to search for a wooden texture, something, I don't know, we'll, we'll find something that is going to work for us. Maybe we can go for something a bit darker, like so. Now you can notice here that we have some issues. If you have something like this, th th this is one of the drawbacks of this technique because we're using a solidify and subdivision and usually those will create some trouble when you're working with uh, PBR maps and not procedurally generated stuff. In our case, let's try just moving the UV to generate it. Maybe we can use the Z or the Y to rotate, but if you're not getting super nice results, I just suggest you try something different. In our case, it actually worked pretty well, I would say. It's kind of a nifty look. So I want to just move on to the last part and just maybe find a leather material. Hopefully, Blender Kid has something like that. Okay, so for some reason, I'm trying to add this and it's not working. So I'm just going to be a smart ass, add a UV sphere, move this UV sphere away then search for leather and when my bar appears i'm just going to choose this one by Willem duha which seems to be pretty good and i'm going to just choose the handle shift select the sphere shift q and copy materials to select it so it looks something like that there you go you have your own little tasty looking shield so yeah, this is going to be it for this tutorial. As always, there's going to be a free resource file in the description below. However, I want to turn your attention to one thing. If you would like to continue with this, I have a exercise for you. And in this case, I would suggest you go through several different iterations of the first shape of the shield and try to make, let's say, 10 different shields. And I think it's a very good exercise because that will bring up a lot of maybe issues that you will see more, let's say, down the line of you modeling and creating the whole shield. So you will be able to actually understand what you need to be careful of when you start modeling the shield rather than when you finished it. Take this as a more, let's say, extra tidbit of information. The fact is that a lot of creators, myself included, we prepare these tutorials in advance and we're not making them as we go. So we already know what we expect to happen at the end of the tutorial. And I really, really, really want you to try and make as many mistakes as you have to 
because that is going to ultimately help you understand what you need to watch out when you start working on a object, on a model, on a character or whatever. So yeah, hopefully this was interesting. Hopefully you've learned something and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.